Hi, welcome to part 2 of the tutorial on creating a procedural snow shader in Unity. If you haven't seen part 1, you can watch it here first. In this part, we're going to work on roughness, normals, and tessellation. First, let's work on the normal map. I want to implement a feature where the snow areas have a different normal map. First, I need a LERP node to identify the snowy areas. Connect the snowy area to the T input. Next, connect the surface normal map to the A input. And for the snow areas normal map, I'll use a noise node. But I need to use the normal from height node to convert the noise into a normal map. Connect the noise to N. Next, connect the result to the B input. Alright, everything is set. Now I need to control the strength using a property. Let's create a property. Okay, save the shader and let's test it. The surface doesn't have any normal yet. We need to increase the strength first. As you can see, by increasing this property, the normal map starts to appear. Alright, good. Now let's work on the other objects. Okay, next we need to adjust the roughness. The snow areas should appear wet, but in our case the object's roughness map will be applied to the entire surface. We need a LERP node for the section. Connect this new area to the T input, just like before. Connect the object roughness to the A input. And for the B input, which represents the snowy area, I need a value of 1 or something close to 1 since it's wet. Alright, let's save it. The snowy surface now has maximum smoothness. Let's check the rock. Another problem we have is the displacement. I want to implement something where the snow areas have displacement. We need to go to the graph settings and activate the tessellation option. Now we have two extra fields that we need to work with the tessellation factor. We need a multiply node to multiply a float by the snow area to control the displacement amount.
Connect the snow area to the multiply node. And for the second value, I need to create a displacement multiplier. Alright, let's save it. Now we have a new section. In the tessellation options, I need to change the mode to Funk. And then increase the shape factor. Now, by increasing the displacement, we can see this new area gain some height. Let's activate this option for the other objects. Displacement makes the rock much better since it changes the vertices. As you can see by changing the range of the snow area, the vertices position changes dynamically. By rotating the object, we can see that the snow behaves as expected. This is the final shader. You can download it for free from our asset store at store.blackcave.com. With this shader, we can remove the snow anywhere we want. And we don't need to create a snowy textures. Also, this shader is not too complex for the system. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.